one, as I told you, reported 2,286 hadith, not something written. And it's too big. All the hadith of rulings, all main hadith of Islam. So if these hadith are yani, practiced, they, their da'wah would be demolished. So they want to defend their da'wah, false da'wah. What they do? They attack the members of the defense. Abu Huraira, Aisha, Abdullah, Ibn Umar, etc. The ones who narrated the most hadith. So you don't have any references. You have not any references to Rasulullah Sallallahu That's what they wanted. So be careful of this plan. And the shaitan is the planner of theirs. He's planning for them. And he, they, they are spreading this uh, yani plans. May Allah Ta'ala protect Islam and the Muslims from them. Uh, this question is, uh, somebody asked, what is the ruling upon those who allow newspapers which contain pictures of half-naked women? The rulings were here or in the hereafter. Here, uh, who, who, yani, who can do any control in, 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 in this land? This land, no control. Our blanket would be fully covered to, to, to them. Yeah. But in, in the hereafter, Allah will start. And yani, punishment will be severe. Yani, anybody brings the fitna to the uh, people. Those who yani, spread the fitna amongst people, especially the fitna of uh, yani, fornicating and women and like that, even if it is a woman to kuffar, Allah doesn't accept it. Because it's an evil. It's an evil. Even in their religions, it's forbidden. But they are not their religions, as you see. They are starting now selling the churches and they don't care about their religion. But we, the Muslims, to do that, shame. Really shame. Say Muslim and you and you allow like these things in the newspaper that you either own or manage, that's shame. And I advise you to stop, either to stop it or if you can't, just quit because on the day of resurrection, you have no any excuse, no any uh, apologies will be accepted. May Allah Ta'ala protect us all. JazakAllah uh, khair. There is uh, one question. Uh, I don't think it is related with the, the topic, but uh, uh, I think some sister, she asked, uh, why Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wanted to divorce uh, Hafsa radiallahu ta'ala what was the reason? Alhamdulillah she wasn't divorced. It is like any other couple. Any problems? You know that he saw Sallam abandoned his wives, all of them, for one whole month. Because due to jealousy, some things happen, you know. Hafsa and Aisha, you know. And the jealousy, this is normal, everyone. This is normal. But Isa Sallam abandoned them for one whole month. It's in the house, but in a higher room, living alone there, for 29 days. One whole lunar month. And then he uh, yani, uh, forgave them and he he uh, came down to live with them. But, he saw Salah passed away, divorced no single wife of his, except one who he did not even, he, he did not even have any wedding with him. When he came to the wedding, she said, A'udhu Billahi Bih. He said, Laqad Usti Bi Mu'ad, Ilhaqi Bi'ala. <coughs> he said, she said, I seek refuge by Allah from you. He said to her, you have seek refuge from one who can provide it. Then you go back to your family. That's it. Other than that, none of his wives were divorced. 
all of them, he either died in his time or he died and while he was pleased with them all. May Allah Ta'ala be pleased with them all. Again, uh, this question uh, is a uh, little bit irrelevant, but uh, uh, somebody asked, you mentioned that uh, there was no woman who would refuse Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I believe there was one, but uh, I forgot her name. If you have forgotten them. No, that is the one I said. That is the one I mentioned. She was from the Arab, the Badu, the Bedouins. And she said so. So the Prophet said to told them, go back to your father. That's, that's the only one. Uh, last question. Uh, somebody asked <coughs> that how did Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam pray with the Salah? That's, uh, they call it a joint question. You know the joint? Rasulullah prayed Salat al Witr in different ways. He prayed them. He prayed Witr as uh, the usual and normal two raka. He recited Surah Al A'la in the first raka after Fatiha and Al Kabir in the second raka. And then he makes shawl and salam. And then he stands and makes one another raka. He recites Surah Al Fatih and Surah Al Khlas. And then he uh, That is the uh, common one, common form of, common way of performing Salat al Witr for Surah al But he did use, uh, he did uh, once, he did sometimes pray the whole three in one salam, but he did not sit except in the last. And he did five, same thing, he did not sit except in the last. And he did seven, and he sat on the sixth, and then he stood, and then without salam. And then brought the seventh, and then he sat for last salam, for last salam. And, did, and he did nine the same way. So these are different ways that is authentically reported to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But the common one was two rakah, then salam, and then one rakah. One rakah. Wallahu alayhi wa sallam. One make qunud. Qunud? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it wasn't reported that he, he used to make qunud. But he taught Al-Hasan bin Ali to say uh, in the night prayers, uh, Allahumma adhini fi man adayt wa adhini fi man abayt to the end of this hadith. Now, but it, it wasn't reported that Isa Salam used to do kunud in the witr. It wasn't reported, but it does not mean it is not allowed. Because the sunnah is of three forms. Sunnah fi'liya, which is actions of his, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Or sunnah qawliya, which is directions from him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Or sunnah taqliya, which he uh, yani, uh, uh, authenticate or affirm and accept from the Sahaba of something they did. The life of that one who uh, used to recite Qul Wallahu Ahad and every rak'ah that he used to uh, pray. And the, the life of Abu Sa'id al Khudri when he did the Rukya with Surah al Fatiha seven times. And the like, this called Sunnah Taqriri. And Witr is from this sunnah, is, is from the sunnah qawliya, or the saint, the, the, the directional. He directed al Hasan Ali to say so. So that means this is the way that it is permissible, but uh, it's not compulsory, it's not obligatory. Allah. Jazakallah. This uh, question, Shaykh, is a. Uh, uh, too much relevant to our topic and it is very useful although we have very short time but inshallah after this question we will do our salah. Uh, Sheikh, what advice can you give to newly married couples and those people looking to get married with respect to the etiquettes and manners uh, following the characteristics of Prophet Muhammad 
and his blessed wife to make marriage a successful and rewardful and blessed. Let's need two separate uh, lectures, inshallah. <laughs> really, because this is a long topic. Like, generally, we say those who are looking now for yeah, marrying, who are looking for wives or wives looking for husbands, the Prophet gave the guidance. And he said that to the man, he said, the woman is uh, proposed for one of four reasons. Her wealth, meaning uh, beauty or religion. He said, take the one of religion, otherwise you fill your hand with soil, meaning useless. He told the wali of the woman, if a man who you accept his religion and character comes, approaches you to marry your daughter, then let him to marry. Otherwise, you are going to cause a big destruction in the community, in the society. So these are the main guidances to the man and woman who look for marriage. The man should look for the religious one and also the woman look for the one who is religious. And also the man, Allah, uh, the Prophet told him to look for one who is wadud and walud. Yani, uh, she is yani, from a family that is known that they, the woman, <laughs> mashallah, give children, yani, they have more children. Huh? More for time. And also a lover woman, a humble woman. Not a woman that is rough. And he yeah, always argues and fights like this, avoid him. Avoid him. He didn't need one, he didn't want any headings. No problem. Wallahi, Akhwan, one day I was in one, yeah, in one in one country here in the West. And when I came out of the masjid, I saw something strange. A Muslim couple were fighting <laughs> by hand in the street. <laughs> That's not good. This is a very rough woman to fight, and she started stoning the husband and took her slipper and threw him. And then he ran after her, and she, they started running between the cars. But that's not good. You don't want like that. And fighting in the house bring really bad to the house. The morale of the children will be broken and destroyed. So always look for the gentle woman, and women look for the gentle man. This is the one more valuable than wealth. If he is poor, but somebody who is humble and religious, take him. It's a treasure. It's a treasure. Where you can find it today? Where you can find it? May Allah Ta'ala grant him a good life. And in regard to those who are about to get married, I say, fear Allah. And know that life is not as you imagine. Life has its own difficulties. When you are only uh, uh, fiance, and, and you know, and that's a different life, you know. When you and, uh, engage, that's a different life. All honey, beautiful speeches, because you all separate now, far away. Once you come to life, there are a lot of things, a lot of troubles. Don't be scared, but be ready for it. Don't come imagining that you are coming just for a very comfortable life, like what you can imagine. And some, some masakeen look to the TV and they think, oh, this is the life that I want. These all are liars on the TV. These are liars. They just act. Don't think life is like that. No, no, life is something different. Something different. One day, a man came to the house of Umar ibn Khattab and knocked the door. And then he left. Umar opened the door and saw him. He said, come back. He knocked the door and went, why you did that? He said, I came to complain to you, O Amir al-Mu'mineen, from my wife, who always shout at me and raise their voice. But I found your wife doing the same. He said to him, look, this woman take care of our children. Clean our clothes, cook our food, clean our house. We have to be humble with them. Now, 
And Abdullah ibn Abbas one day was getting to his house, his companions with him, he stopped. And he started making himself Yeah. And took this toothstick and perfume. They asked him, why you do that? He said, because I like her to be always beautiful and nice when I come. So I must be like that. So life, Ikhwan, is different. Life is not. And you hear that Rasulullah Sallam, 29 days upon his wife. It's not something easy, but you have to live it. Without marriage, you can't have children. You can't have family. You, there is no continuity of human and uh, humanity. So we have to live, we have to marry, but as we said, we choose the good ones and then get the fact of life, that this is life. It's not joke. It's not, yani, you go honeymoon and mashallah, everything nice. Come back from the honeymoon, the moon disappears. <laughs> All the time, sun, sun, sun. Nah. We have to be gentle with each other. Now, nah. I know a friend of mine, Sheikh, Huh? Who always, especially when he travels abroad for da'wah, always takes his wife beautiful statements. Beautiful statements. You know what? His wife told him, you always go for da'wah. You always go for da'wah. Because when he goes for da'wah, always send this nice, nice, beautiful speech. Yeah. And sometimes he wrote poems and, and, and sent it to her. She likes it. So she says, you always go. Always go for that one. Subhanakallah, Alhamdulillah, 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 Alham